Hello, my name is Charles Delastic. I am the Managing Director of Blue Bond Tax Planning. We've been inheritance tax specialists for more than 18 years and have helped hundreds of clients save millions of pounds on their inheritance tax planning and implementation. So today's video is around a query that was raised because the client saying, well, I've noticed in some of your videos you've said that standard whole of life insurance is not actually a cost. Well, I pay for it in premiums. How can it not be a cost? OK, so this video is going to explore that thinking and we'll go forward in it after the intro. Hello and welcome back and as I say today's video is around why my personal belief is that for many clients standard whole of life insurance is not actually a cost. So what's my thinking behind that? Well very simply any type of insurance that you take out is a cost. So you take out car insurance, you don't wreck your car, the money gets lost. You take out um, life insurance for up until age 60, you don't die before 60. The money's lost it's a cost you take out uh, contents insurance you don't damage anything in your house and the later you know a year later you have to renew the premium and everything you've paid in the past is lost if you've never made a claim so all life insurance depend policy all insurance policies depend upon making a claim and if a claim is not made then effectively the money's lost however with a standard whole of life policy you are going to die unless you know something I don't, of course, right? So everybody dies, and therefore, when the second person dies, because these are normally done on a joint life second death basis, the insurance policy pays out. So why is it not a cost? Well, let's say you insure yourself for 500,000. In other words, you believe that by the time you die, the value of your assets are going to exceed your allowances by more than half a million. So you take out a 500,000 pounds worth of cover. Well, unless you've got poor health, the amount of money that you pay in premiums over the term of the policy, even presuming you live till 95, will always be significantly less than the money that gets paid out. OK, so therefore, it's not truly a cost. It's you're taking money from your bank account today. You're putting it into this policy. And when you die, the money will pay out and Presumably you would put it in trust and therefore it would pay out completely tax free to your beneficiaries, your children or whoever. Right. So therefore, all you're doing is it's a transfer of wealth. It's not strictly speaking a cost because your children will always get out more than you paid in unless you have significant health problems, in which case you may not even be able to get the cover anyway. So I see it as a transfer of value and a transfer of wealth. Now, of course, for some people, they're very asset rich and income poor. So we need to find ways in which to pay the premiums if and when required. And there are different types of life insurance, which I cover in some of my other videos, which help keep the overall expenditure going on. But really, if you can afford the premiums or if we can set it up for you to be able to afford the premiums, then standard whole of life is not a cost. It's just a transfer of value. And as long as you can meet the payments for as long as you live, it's a pretty good way of avoiding inheritance tax, certainly on your main residence. OK, so hopefully you found that video useful. If you did, please give us a like and a thumbs up. It will be appreciated. It does help the channel. But thanks for listening and goodbye for now. Bye.